Uh, welcome to this week's review of Warhammer Conquest issue 25. <clears throat> this one's a shiny silver grey. Um, as you can see, we've got some beautiful, beautiful plastic, uh, plastic crack there. So that'll be nice. Um, <clears throat> sorry, twitchy twitch twitch. <clears throat> we've got the uh, second instalment of the Dreadnought, which with eh, it always fits. With this, should enable us to make. The complete dreadnought. I'm going to be doing that in a video later because I fancy it. Why not? But again, we can see. Did <coughs> I get that there? And focus. Oh, oh well. We can see there. We've got some very high quality plastic. Um, as usual, little more brittle than. Uh, than the normal grey plastic we're used to, but still an entirely, an entirely uh, workable plastic there. <clears throat> and so just to remind you, we got half the gun, half the fist, and the front camera place, along with the big base last week. So this week we've gone the other half the fist with the uh, flamer, the other half the gun, the other foot, the legs here and the main torso which should enable us to build an entire dreadnought its weapons loader is limited to the one weapon loader because it is the easy to build dreadnought as we suspected it was always going to be <clears throat> but they're still big they're still awesome and the etb is a little sleeker looking if i'm honest <clears throat> discover more dreadnoughts <clears throat> Got some lovely pictures there. Um, paint your redemptor. Crazy idea there. <clears throat> Same one cover with inside cover, all our details, all our copyrights. The ubiquitous Ian. First bit, we've got a quick bit on the Contempt of Dreadnoughts. For those of you not familiar with the Contempt of Dreadnoughts, they are a little more humanoid looking and a little more taller than that. But they are in fact older tech, they're the Heresy Tech Dreadnoughts, some of the original guys. So they're a little more elegant. They look quite good when you put them alongside um, Primaris Marines because they're where, where they're a little more elegant and the Primaris are a little more elegant. The aesthetic works quite well. <coughs> but they are nowhere near as <coughs> but they're nowhere near as tough and big as the other Dreadn as um as our Redemptors. Got our ironclads there. Ironclads are siege breakers. Um, every dreadnought's heavily armoured, but ironclads are almost nothing but armour and weapons. <clears throat> Their sole purpose is to drag themselves <clears throat> to wherever they need to be and act like a massive heavy weapons platform that you can't kill. They're really meaty and really vicious. Now, moving on, we've got dreadnought weapons. It's going to go through what weapons you can often get on Dreadnoughts. <clears throat> the classic favourite, twin-linked LAS cannon. <clears throat> your plasma cannon, your multi-melter, your missile launcher, your assault cannon, which tends to be the one they all start with, and your Dreadnought close combat weapon, which takes a lot of forms, but is basically a power fist on a Dreadnought. <clears throat> Some fantastic artwork there. Twisted Servants of the Dark Mechanicum, often allied with the Death Guard, the Disciples of Decay. Oh, <clears throat> Some Nurgle <clears throat> Dark Mechanicum, very nice. Uh, <clears throat> gives a little story there. It goes on to cover uh, Traitor Mechanicum, Traitor Guardsmen, Traitor Knights and Traitor Titans. 
which is all very cool. And then we've got, you can see here is a picture of your fully built Dreadnought. As you can see, it's a uh, very vicious and meaty. <coughs> and here they've got a guide of all the paints you're going to need to paint your Dreadnought. It's probably one of the bigger painting guides we've seen. There's a lot of work there. <coughs> Obviously, of course, uh, <coughs> it's covering more paints as well <coughs> than the other paint guys. <coughs> so you'll get you're taking this dreadnought from beginning to completion <coughs> in one bigger uh, one big leap. <coughs> or at least to completion as far as you can. We can see there it's looking great. Uh, still a little flat and a few bit extra bits could be done to it but looking fantastic <clears throat> and the first mission is Redemptor Strike which is using a bunch of your Death Guard Marines and a bunch of your Pox Walkers you know, cool stuff about there um, suffering damage and explodes how those rules work <clears throat> and our first changing day issues. You'll see more of this as we get more vehicles. <clears throat> We've got baseline stats. <clears throat> and then in the baseline stats you've got three stars. Now as it takes damage, those stats change. Um, the star stats, and these are standard on most vehicles, are movement, weapon skill, ballistic skill. <clears throat> and here you've got... <clears throat> Um, stats with the remaining wounds, 7 to 13 plus, which is all its wounds. <coughs> uh, your movement is 8 inches, you've got a weapon skill of 3 and a ballistic skill of 3. <coughs> 4 to 6 wounds, or 6 to 4, whatever you want to think of it. You've got a movement of 6, a ballistic skill of 4, and a weapon skill of 4, and then 1 to 3 wounds, a movement of 4, a ballistic skill of 5, and a weapon skill of 5. This is standard with pretty much all vehicles. Um, I say pretty much all, I'm not aware of any exceptions, though if I say all vehicles, doubtless somebody will point out any exceptions. Feel free to point out any exceptions anyway, I always love to know about new things. <clears throat> and here you've got the bits explaining how that damage works and how the vehicle deteriorates as it goes. <clears throat> and then there's some examples so you know how that works. With here being your actual full um, <coughs> stat sheet, these stat sheets are actually really good because the, yeah, if you put them if you put them in a nice solid uh, clear binder, in a ring binder, you a decent quality one, then you can write across that with um, dry white markers, or you can write across it with permanent markers and use dry white markers as an eraser. It's a little neat trick worth knowing there. So you can make any notes of auras and stuff like that, and they're easily accessible. And you can flick back through them, you know, arranging it and bringing out only the troops you need, so you don't have to search as much as you would with a standard uh, codex. So it's actually a bit of an advantage. And then we've got the second mission, the Fury Unleashed. Not to be confused with the Furry Unleashed, which is the Space War version of that mission. And you're basically Might V's Blight, which is just your guy blowing up a ton of their guys, or the other way around. <clears throat> Who knows? Um, <clears throat> all in all, this one's actually a. Uh, <clears throat> it's not shorter than the others, but a big chunk is taken up by that painting guide. So you're not getting quite as many stories as you got last week, but that being said, you got a lot of stories last week, and there is another one coming up which is going to have more stories in. <clears throat> We've got <clears throat> another paint one with um, Reichland Flesh and Abaddon Black, so you've got a resupply there. But you know that means the whole thing's going to be crammed full of story because it doesn't have, you to tell you, have to tell you how to build anything, it only has to tell you how you can add some of these paints, so that's going to be cool. But then, after that, we've got our first, um, our first tank. Well, it says tank, it's a Chaos Rhino, <clears throat> but that's pretty cool. I mean... 
it is a Chaos Rhino, but most of the bits that make it a Chaos Rhino <coughs> will be bits you don't have to add, such as the spikes and the emblems. So <coughs> if you want, if you're a Marine player and you want to keep it, for example, there's supposed to be some scouts coming up. If you want to keep it to uh, transport scouts around, it's still useful. And even if you don't want to use that, it's still a good vehicle for either side. They're relatively cheap. They've got a few weapons, and when they blow up, they make a damn good brick wall. Um, uh, I don't know whether we're going to be getting the full one of that. I expect we're going to be split up into a, into a couple of issues, the same as we were with the Dreadnought. If that is the case, then I won't be doing the prize draw next week. I'll be doing it when we have the whole Rhino, so they can send the whole Rhino off to one person. Um, again, because I've collect primaries, yes, I could in theory use it, but... Uh, I've already got my scouts and I don't use them in vehicles um, because I run with a, I run my uh, company with the Space Wolf rules. Having Space Wolf scouts so you can deploy them without vehicles perfectly well and they're quite cool. Um, so that's going to be going out as a prize. Um, yeah, frankly, all in all, a really cool video and keep your eye out because I'm going to be building this shortly in fact i'm probably gonna be building this directly after this video but it won't go out straight away okay see you guys next week where we'll open another copy of warhammer conquest and see what's inside have a nice week guys hi guys hope you enjoyed that video and if you did remember to like and subscribe to my channel i'm also on facebook and twitter I'm not sure why but i am um so if you like it see me there and uh please tell your friends thanks very much bye